There you go, that looks amazing. Do you like it? How are you getting on? It's taken a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> this is the first coat. Oh, is it? Yeah. Washed all the walls down. Um, and then I started painting. I started just above the door. <laughs> In case it wasn't clear, we're painting the living room. Um, Kim is very particular about decorating. But I'm allowed to do the big bulky bits. And she does all the fine, careful bits. But I've, I've still got, I'm probably not paying enough attention now. I'm probably, I've still got specific instructions to follow. Um, but she's let me do the most important wall first, the one we all look at when we're watching the telly. Second coat. <laughs> of course, amazingly, the weekend we decide to paint the living room, the weather's actually good enough to go climbing outdoors. It's going to be about 10 degrees and dry. Or Ridiculous. Salt, work. Unbelievable. Look at that. I did that. That looks amazing. Kim's been doing all the prep work and did the first coat of the last few days. So I just come in and get to do the glory coats. <laughs> I had a bit of paint. First coat. That I cannot do with this brush. So you've been cutting in and you've been looking at my paintwork up close. What grade do I get? Oh, I get 10. It's awesome. 10 out of what? A, B, C, D. 10 out of 100, 10 percent. I get 10 percent, yeah, I'll 10 take that. I'll yeah. take 10 percent. I'll go with, well done, you haven't sponged it everywhere. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. Second coat's done the trick. Yeah, looks good. Actually, rock pools don't look too bad, do they? What rock pools do we want to take on today? No, it looks alright. Sand. Normally, you have to. Normally, that's all rock pools. It's like three foot deep. It's the end of January. What? It's gone really stuffy. It's the end of January. We're actually outdoors climbing. It's warmed up to about 10 degrees and it's not raining and it's dry, but the, the rock doesn't look terribly dry but hey it never does on the beach of Brazil right? we've been in this house for quite a long time so the house needs redecorating so the living room is a big target of Kim's what do you think she spent ages picking the color um, it's nice and cozy in there now but painting rooms like that painting rooms to to like how you want them to be feels like a bit of a commitment which leads me into the other thing I wanted to talk about the trend this year on YouTube, at the beginning of 2024, seems to be uh, quitting YouTube. Anyway, let's uh, climb this. <laughs> nice and wet. I mean, this is all wet because of the because of the tide, right? Yeah. So, where and when we climb today is dictated to us by the tide, and we're trying to have a chill day. Ticking off some routes down here because we've done most of these routes. Ticking off things we haven't done. This one is like a three. Super achievable routes. Make you feel good about yourself. Get that season going. Um, and it looks wet, but I reckon it'll be drier when we get up there. The Maybe. The <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Here's the first tricky bit. <laughs> this is terrible. Go on, Barnacle, show me the way. <sighs> Oh, 
Oh, that's just a rock pool. Yeah. Now, I love the climbing wall, but shockingly, I love doing this even more. Still wet. <laughs> uh, my Kim said that yellow bit does look good. Lovely. I found a dry handhold. I'm getting above sea level, as in high tide level. Oh, that was great. Okay. Dum, dum, dum. Okay, that was actually a lot wetter than expected, but it's pretty joggy. That's actually quite good, that. I can't, oh, I can't feel it at all, I can't feel anything. It must be just the, the finest shave by some barnacles. Oh, <laughs> it's like a big flappy bit of skin hanging off it, yeah. You're not on Beale. Look. You remembered your tour bag. Uh, the route is wet because it's a sea cliff and the sea was there earlier today. And it's not hot and it's not June or July. So it hasn't dried. But the bolts are excellent, the bolts are close together, so if I slip, it shouldn't be any biggie. The wind's turned around and it's getting darker somehow. Oh well. Um yeah, the trend in 2024 so far this year has been for people to quit YouTube. It's people who've been doing it a little bit longer than me. Um, I've done it for seven years, I'm in my eighth year. It's kind of the OG YouTubers, those that have been doing it for 10 years, 12 years. And I think what's happening is, well really they're not, they're not completely quitting. Most of them are changing what they do, maybe being, not being so regular. And I think I can see that from the perspective of someone who has a normal job. Um, and from someone that does YouTube as well, right? It's like my job. Um, I actually didn't sign up to do this job because I wanted to teach. I signed up for this job because it was a permanent job. It was uh, job security when I had a family, but it turns out I really like teaching. Um, but the longer you do a job for, so you come into a job often because you like doing that job, but then the longer you're in that job for, the more experience you get, new people come in underneath you, right? That's your work. Um, and what happens is you just start moving up, you start to become more of a supervisor, a trainer, a manager. That's like the normal job progression over 10 years, if you're good at your job and you stay there, you become more of a, an organiser, a manager, which means there's a risk of you moving away from that bit of the job that you did the job for in the first place. People who've been doing YouTube for a long time, particularly those that have been very successful, well, what's happened to them is, of course, they've They've got into it for the fun thing, and then they've got really big slowly over time. And there's a couple of things that happen, I think. One, you get, what you do is driven by your audience. Your audience likes to see this, so you do more of this, you get more views, because what you're doing has become a job, it's become a business, right? And then you also employ people to, do, to help you with your output, like you might employ editors, or people to organize this, or manage that, or do your marketing, and that sort of thing, right? And again, then you start getting pushed away from the bit that you got into the job for in the first place. So the, the job changes over 10 years. Also, after doing anything for 10 years, you kind of get a little bit bored and tired and are ready for a change probably, right? I know that I've said many times with this job, well, I'll do it for five years and then... Okay, I'll do it for 10 years and then... Uh, and then 50, and now I'm 20 years, right? And I'm still thinking that, I'm still thinking, uh, another, another four or five years and maybe I'll go and... So this is what I mean about painting. Painting the living room being a commitment. <laughs> it's saying, I'm gonna be here for a few more years. Um, but from my perspective doing YouTube, it's different from a full-time 
YouTubers, right? I've got a job that I really enjoy that pays me a salary. The YouTube bit is a bit I do extra for interest, for fun, to keep me motivated, to do something that I want to do. So I find it important for me to talk about topics that I want to talk about. I'm not really driven by, sorry. You guys give me good ideas sometimes when I talk about those. I'm not really driven by what people want to see. I'm driven by what I want to talk about. I do what I want to do. I talk about what's interesting to me this week. And if somebody else finds it interesting or useful, great. And by keeping to that, I think I'll keep going for longer than if I was trying to be big, trying to get lots of views, trying to, you know, beat the algorithm, right? It's good up here. So, as long as I keep myself interested, um, I'll keep going, which goes for much of life, doesn't it really? Just keep yourself interested and you'll keep doing it. And when you stop getting interested in it, it's probably fair enough to move on and do something different. Why not? <laughs>